Let's talk about Snagit 2024. What's in it for you and do you need it? To answer those questions, I'm going to walk you through what's new in 2024 and talk about a couple of things that have been updated since the last time I did a Snagit video. So let's jump right in and check it out. The screen capture tool for Snagit has been redesigned a little bit. Most of that has been done under the video section, but I'm going to start with image first. One of the things that is different is you now have the option to send a screenshot directly to Microsoft Teams. For this demonstration, I'm going to be a bit meta and take a screenshot of Microsoft Teams. You can choose what makes sense for your project. To bring up the selection tool, I use my hotkey print screen. And now I'm going to grab a list of teams to share with a coworker. The Snagit editor automatically opened and at the bottom of the screen, you see a blue box that says, finish sharing capture. Click on finish and a floating dialog box will appear. This is where you choose which Microsoft Teams account to connect to. In my case, I have work and personal. For this example, I will choose my personal account. On the new screen, you see a list of permissions that Snagit must have before sending the screenshot to Microsoft Teams. You will need to consent and then click accept. If this is a work Microsoft account, you may want to verify that you are allowed to complete this action. The next dialog box allows you to craft the message that goes with the screenshot. We have the choice to send the message to a team or to a chat. In this scenario, Teams is selected, so in the Share To drop-down box, you will see a list of teams that you belong to. Next, you will choose which channel to post the message in. After that, you can type your message and then click Share. In the bottom right corner, a message will pop up to view the shared file. This will try to open the Teams web application, but I'm going to open the Teams desktop app since they both show the same result. I navigated to the channel that we chose, and here you can see that the message and the screenshot did in fact show up in Microsoft Teams. Let's go back to the selection tool and look at the videos tab. This is where most of the 2024 changes come into play. First, we have screen draw. This will bring up an annotation toolbar that you can use while recording. By default, what you draw will stay on the screen for three seconds, but you can change it. The record webcam option showed up late 2023, and I just wanna remind you that it's there so that you can set up your web camera now instead of waiting until after you click the capture tool. As a tip, click the arrow next to it to double check that the correct web camera is selected. In my case, I have two options. One is my Logitech Brio and the other is OBS Studio. I just wanted to give you a heads up about where you can find your devices in case you need to make a change. Next is the new capture cursor. This has two options. It can put a halo around your mouse the same way it does in Camtasia, and you can also add a click animation. It is possible to change the cursor and the click animation colors. Now, in my experience, it's best to use one or the other because picking both can be a bit much and make it look cluttered. I will select both so you can see what I mean, and then you choose what you like best. Once you select the area to record, a new set of toolbars will appear. The vertical option is the draw toolbar and the horizontal toolbar is the one we've had for a while with the standard record, turn webcam off and on, etc. Now let's create a sample recording. Please note, I'm keeping the toolbars on the screen for demonstration purposes, but you're going to want to take them off your screen or they will show up in the video. With the draw toolbar active, I can put in steps, arrows, squares, etc. You will not see the cursor animations until you turn the draw tools off. To do that, click the exit draw icon at the very bottom of the draw toolbar. Now you see that there is a small halo underneath my cursor. And if I click on something, you will see a red click animation behind the halo. Personally, I don't think it shows up very well, so that's why I suggest you do one or the other. You can easily go back and forth between the cursor animations and the drawing tool. So I turn draw back on, and then I can add things like arrows and numbers to 
draw people's attention to exactly what I need them to focus on in my Snagit video. I stopped the recording and now we are in the Snagit editor. I would like to point out another new feature related to Snagit videos. In the toolbar beneath the video, there's a new button called Add Video. You can now combine multiple video captures into one file here in Snagit. This used to require editing software. Click on Add Videos to select any MP4 file that is in your Snagit library, then click Combine Videos. Let's go back to the screenshot we took at the beginning of the video to show some examples of new features for screenshots. One of the biggest changes is there are several new stamps to use, mostly in the smiley and people category. The default category that shows on this screen is activity. Click the drop down arrow to look at other options. You can also use search to quickly find stamps. In this example, I searched for the word party so that I could find the smiley face with a party hat. I'm going to select that stamp place it on the canvas and then resize it and move it around until I'm happy with what it looks like. The next change is the default color palette that is used for things like callouts, arrows, text, steps, etc. As I click through the options, notice on the right side of the screen, there's a slightly different shade of red, a vibrant green, a brighter yellow and blue. The edges of the images are also slightly more rounded versus the older squared off edges. Now these are just the default, so don't worry if you have a prior color palette such as branded colors for your work, you can still use them. I'm going to add a box around the team name I want my coworker to pay attention to. And then after that, this screenshot is ready to go. Now you can send your screenshot anywhere that makes sense to you, but in this example, we're going to send it to Microsoft Teams. Click the drop down next to share link in the upper right hand corner, and here you see the option to send this screenshot to Microsoft Teams. And this will run you through the same process that we looked at earlier in the video. So that's it for the major updates for Snagit 2024. Check out the video on the screen to see more ways to use Snagit to create professional screenshots, and I'll see you over there. Let's talk about Snagit. <clears throat> Losing my voice already. And a couple of features that were added during late 2023. You don't care when they were added. Let's talk about Snagit 2024. What's in it for you, and do you need it? To answer those questions, I'm going to walk you through the new 2024 features and a couple of updates that... <sighs> da -da 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 -da.